cut. Who knows what a head cut is? Well, let me explain that because this is probably one of the most important things to know about erosion. So, supposing I'm going to make a little situation here. What if this is the water course? This is the water course, this is the banks, and you know, if you're walking down the water course, and what if you get to a place? where it's really steep and there's a drop off like that, okay? And so we have a pretty nice stream like this then all of a sudden it can drop off like that and you have to step down off of that thing, okay? I'll tell you what, water's going this way, sediment's going this way, but that drop off is going that way. Because when the water comes, it's going to remove that particle to some point downstream. It's going to keep digging at this, and what's going to happen during stream flow is this drop-off is going to keep going like that, and all this stuff is going to go way down there. And erosion control 1.0 is to armor the face of the head cut with rock, okay? And that could work. Um, erosion control 2.0 is to build a check dam at some point downstream and then what happens during a runoff event is that the pour over of your structure raises the water surface elevation so that the head cut is no longer a waterfall. If you build a check dam a little bit downstream from your head cut water is falling into a pool and you've created a depositional zone where there was previously an erosional zone. It's all about managing shear stress. When you do this at home, I would really like to see the rocks this way, okay, because that alignment of a rock is less likely to roll when the stream is kicking ass. What I like to do is figure out how we can lock these things together. Its brother, yeah, near it. When you do this at home, take your time and try to make them be That's locked nice. in tight so that they won't roll. See, when I hit this, I'm moving that rock. Mm -hmm. When you build this thing, if it's locked in real real tight then it won't move and one of the common things to do is to when you add more rocks to put them here what's wrong with that blow out right it won't pass the one finger test 
If it doesn't pass the one finger test, I think the arroyo is going to move your rock. Okay. However, if this rock is like this, okay. So it's still a one rock dam, but you've got two. Right. It's a one rock road. one rock dam in that it's one rock tall. Here's a really good trick for people who want to raise the arroyo more than a tiny little bit, is instead of going up in one place like this, which is gonna make that scour pool that we talked about, what you can do is subsequent rows of rocks. See, if I put this rock here, then that slope is, that slope, is very, very much steeper. That's very, very much steeper than the arroyo bottom. And so if this row of rocks is a half inch higher than that row of rocks, and then your next row of rocks after that is just a teeny bit higher just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit higher. So now I've gone from this height to, now my structure's this high, but it's not all in one place. Right. Water cascading over this structure is gonna dig a tiny little pool. Temporary, it might fill in with sand during the descending limb of the flood hydrograph, but that is defined as a pool. And this steepest, facet slope in the longitudinal profile is the run, like that rock, and then this is the riffle. A riffle is relatively steep, but not the steepest portion of the stream. So if, the, if your bottom row of rocks are really, really keyed in quite well, and only stick up enough to put other rocks behind it, just a teeny little bit higher, in which case less is very much more than if we had enough rocks by the time we got to you we could have a structure that was one foot high 14 inches high but as long as it's long it's not mm -hmm. going to dig nearly as bad of a hole as if it has a vertical face and you have a waterfall if you have a waterfall the water is going to arc in a parabola and dig a big hole. If you have a rock riffle, the turbulence of water sticking and flowing over these rocks, it's not going to speed up nearly as fast because you're building an energy dissipator here. You try to do simultaneously every trick in the book using the shape of the rock, how it ties into its neighbor, and everything else because um, the most expensive structure is the one that fails. And so let's, we're here doing this, do a really careful job the best you can, not hasty. And do your second row and get me some more height on the second row. These aren't going to come out because those aren't going to move. And we're, it's locking in, right? Does somebody else want to do the second row? Hop in, guys. <laughs> Hop in! As everybody knows, flowing water can create erosion, but water is the source of life in the desert, and tree and grass roots can hold the soil and prevent erosion. And so we're working with this balance and we're shifting the balance. It's not a, a dead system of rock particles and, and H2O molecules because we have life and life changes everything. And if we trap some water in a bowl here, that's going to cause a burst of weeds and grasses and a little tree will grow here one day and that will completely dominate the system 
and then one day all of your rocks are going to be covered up you're not even going to be able to see them anymore because you started a positive feedback loop and if you build a bunch of these in your water course you will have stopped down cutting created a zone where things will soak into the ground and grow and then you will have grass growing in what was previously a barren arroyo bottom and the grass roots will hold your rocks together so you're doing bioengineering and you're working with life and water flowing it's not simply a dead pile of rocks this is not artificial intelligence, this is actual intelligence. <laughs> that surface is going to get sub-irrigated. This is going to fill in with water. This water is going to go down, it's going to go laterally, and it's going to wick up into this bank. This bank is now a growing surface in the arroyo. And so what I would do here is I would take this down just a little bit. And, I, and I'm locking my rocks into the bank. If that's grass, what you're doing is you're breaking up into rhizomes that are going to grow anyway. If you try to transplant grass in the desert during a drought, it's just going to die anyway. But if you cut it up and bury all those rhizomes next time it rains, you're going to have grass. And so now this surface is rather analogous to that surface in our very small scale model of the arroyo. This is the high bank. We have a lower bank. We've lowered the bank and we've raised the bottom of the stream. So now this bank is going to be sub-irrigated by the temporary backwater pool we have created. That's gonna come, that's gonna become grassed in probably with like this stuff. And so instead of having that, that's, that's suffering from dry rabble. Instead, we've protected the cross section to here, made a relatively flat zone that's going to become colonized by grass. You're, you're gardening. It's like wildlands, gar we're tending the garden. And over time, it's quite likely that this place is going to be just a little bit more lush than it was before. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Learned a lot. <laughs>